Hello everyone. Welcome to Bella Vista Sales Course Developer Group. Thanks for registering and joining the session. We have Andrew with us who is sharing the flow series this entire month, each week, Wednesday, 5 p.m. Sydney time. And uh, this is the third week. Uh, the last two weeks, uh, the, uh, he shared with us the various use cases about the sales course flow. That recorded video is already available in the event uh, detail page, including the PowerPoint presentation as well. So please go ahead and watch if in case you missed in the previous session or you want to revisit. That video is already available in the event detail page. And a uh, little bit about myself. Uh, I am Sakthiyal Mades. I am a Salesforce MFE and community group leader for the Bella Vista. And I'm working as a senior Salesforce developer with Tech4 Services. And uh, I'm actively available in the social channels. You can reach anytime. In that note, uh, yeah, the sponsors. Thank you to our sponsor for the Trailblazer Community Group and Validity INC, who is sharing with the swag to all the participants. So only thing, the participant, just to go to the link and fill your contact information. Uh, once again, thank you, Validity INC team, for your support uh, to the Trailblazer Community Group. Thank you, Andrew. It's over, uh, over to you. Please uh, share your perfect. screen and go ahead from your side. Yeah, perfect. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to week three. I hope you guys are as excited as I am for this week. Um, I put quite a lot of content together for you guys this week. Uh, we're looking at account management and flows in account management. So first of all, let me start off by introducing myself. My name is Andrew Fragis. Um, I am a customer success manager at Validity. Um, I'm also an active member in the Salesforce community, a Salesforce answer leader, Salesforce certified admin. I've been in the Salesforce ecosystem uh, for about four years now, if not longer, implementing and maintaining Salesforce CRM and marketing cloud systems. Uh, a couple of housekeeping rules. If you guys have any questions at any point in time, please feel free to chuck them in the chat. I'm always willing to answer some questions um, and go through them as well. So if you guys have them, uh, chuck them in the chat and I'll go through them when we get a chance. Um, Sactiville, before I start, I think, uh, are you able to just copy paste the link? Um, I think there's an issue with the the form. If yeah, we could sort sure. That out. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. Perfect. You guys should all see my screen now and you should all see something that's very familiar to an admin and that's custom metadata. Uh, in my first one example is going to be referencing custom metadata throughout it. So we have a use case where let's say I'm a sales organization and for my sales organization, we are um, wanting to assign accounts by regions. We have different regions, for example, as APAC, EMEA, uh, the Americas, Asia uh, is part of the APAC one. We would have all sorts of different regions. Now, to do this, you determine the region based on the country. And we wouldn't want to incorporate in a flow a, a set of different decisions and all that. Instead, what we could do is just create a custom metadata record and in that custom metadata record, um, if I show that originally, I have created some fields on that as well. So very simple custom metadata record. It's called region allocation. Uh, the fields I added on to this is some custom fields. It's a country field, it's a text field, and a region field. And if you have a look at my region allocations, and these are the, the records I created, so the custom metadata records I created. Uh, the label is Australia, the region allocation name is Australia. So if I look into that record now, Australia, the region is APAC. So we want it to go to the APAC region. Now, the reason why this is important is um, we will get to that in a minute. So at the moment, we're looking at this record here. Uh, this record is United Oil and Gas Singapore. Uh, you can see that it's from Singapore, as the name suggests, but also as the billing address suggests. I've created a custom field called region on the account object. But at the moment, that's empty. So how are we going to populate these region fields? Now we're on our flow. So first of all, before I get started, I'm going to zoom in a bit because I know that zooming in would be easier for everyone. Having a look here. So this is my flow from here. And this flow is a record-triggered flow. 
uh, we're going to have this flow to execute if a record is created or updated and after the record is saved. We're going to obviously have this executing on the account object and we only want this to execute if the region field is null and we can use that global constant value of true, the one we've talked about in the last two weeks. So using that global constant value, that's something that a flow value that you can use that's just set as true. We want to evaluate this every time a record is updated and meets the condition requirements. We don't want to do it only when a record is updated to meet the requirements once because someone might update the field and delete it. All right. Going down, we're going to do a couple of things here. And today we're going to incorporate some things we talked about in the past, which is fault path um, and incorporating that. Now, the, the thing we're going to do first, and this is uh, required for our fault path is we're going to do a get records on the profile object. The reason we do the profile object is because on the user object, it doesn't store the profile name on it. Um, so what we'll do is first we'll find all the records on the profile object, which should only be one that has a name equal to system administrator. Simple. It will store those records. We'll use them again. Now, we're going to do a get records to get all the user records that have a profile D equal to the profile D from that previous um, get records. So we're going to make sure that we're using that same one. We're getting the system admin profile ID. This will be the all records and therefore create a record collection, which we can use later on in our fault path. So since we're talking about fault paths and everything, I'm going to show you first our get records method. We're going to get records and this time we're going to reference that custom metadata. So whenever you create metadata and you want to reference it in a flow, uh, you can get records and get that metadata and it will be listed there. And you can tell it's a metadata record because it's have the underscore underscore NDT. If it's a custom object, as we all know, it will be underscore underscore C. So here we want to get all the metadata records, but only for the country equaling the record building country. And you could have this to any other field. You could do this for multiple conditions as well. But today's example is all about incorporating metadata to help improve your flow, to make it a lot more easier to maintain. And again, we only want to return the first record because I know as the person who set this up, there's only ever going to be one record. Cool. If it doesn't find anything, let's say, for example, we look at our previous bit and our custom metadata, I go back to it from before, I only have a couple of options here. You can see I didn't set up every single country. Let's say, for example, I have Africa in my country field. It doesn't find it. That's where the fault path is going to kick in. So no records are found. We're going to go across the fault path. From here, this is where we're going to loop. So first of all, because we have a record collection from the users, so let's say system admin was myself and Sackville. We have two records in that collection. We're going to loop through those. And we're going to do an action. And this action is going to send an email. So we selected the action as send email. We'll type the body. And the body of the email is that there was no region allocated for the inputted country value on the account. And then you can give the record ID. So I've used the record ID inside of this. Subject line is unknown country slash region allocation. Then email address, comma, separated. Or you can have a collection. Now, this time, we don't want to use the collection because it's a collection of the user records. Instead, I'm just going to have the email address of the current record in the loop. You can select the sender address if you want and send the type. And that's going to send a quick and simple email. Right? It's going to tell me that it's not set up correctly. As a system admin, I'll know now that I need to go and update my custom metadata. But if we go on the happy path, we found the country, we found the metadata record, we go to the update region, uh, we go to the update records. On the object, the account, and again, we're going to use the ID equals the record account ID, and the region, we're going to set that to the allocation from our metadata record. And that's a very simple flow to incorporate on um, metadata 
and using those metadata records inside your file. Very simple, but I wanted to demonstrate to you guys today before we build on complexity because trust me, we've got some good complex ones coming up. Uh, I'm going to pause there before I show it off um, and see if there's any questions. Will the metadata type be added to page layout for user selection? Uh, so in this instance, I haven't added the metadata to the page layout. Instead, I'll be referencing the metadata to then apply a value. Um, so if I'm not quite sure what you mean by adding it to the page layout for user selection. So do you mean adding it to the page layout to select the region? Uh, then you would have to pull the data through um, and then add it in as an option. Yeah, so you have to pull the data from the metadata record um, and you'll be able to add it as, you could even add it in a screen flow and a screen component to be able to have a user selection rather than um, having it. Cool. So now we look at our account. I'm gonna edit this billing address. Now I can see this billing country is empty. So I'm gonna type in uh, Singapore. And we can see now the region is empty and Singapore I've set in my metadata. We have a look again, Singapore, set that to be APAC because Singapore is in the Asia Pacific region. I'm going to click save. And when this saves, it's gone ahead and updated my region to APAC by pulling that data from the metadata record. Uh, any questions on this flow or pulling metadata into your flow and using it? Um, why are you guys are thinking of some questions? Uh, I'm going to explain why you would want to use custom metadata in your flow. Uh, custom metadata is especially handy for when you have a lot of decisions. So think of how many countries there are in the world. And if you break it down by region, roughly, I would say there's about six regions, five regions, right? Uh, if I've done my maths correctly. You wouldn't want to have a decision tree um, on this that has like 300, 400 options. Instead, you would want to just load it once. And it's very easy to use custom metadata records. You could even load it from a CSV. So just create an Excel with the fields you want and just load that in. And it'll create all those different metadata records very easily for you, rather than you doing it manually. And then you'll just reference it. It's essentially like having a decision table, right? You match against that table, and what is the update applied as a result of that table? There is a good example of this on Trailhead uh, of using metadata records on uh, within flows. I remember doing it when I first started off on flows, and that is having a tiered system. So gold, silver, bronze, depending on the amount of expenditure you have. All right, we can see there's no, question, no more questions on this, which is great. And we're going to move on to our next one. So we're going to save this account record for later. I'm going to close, move on to our next flow. Now, this was one that was requested last week um, and was actually a great use case to have. And this one in particular is cloning the account team members onto the opportunity team members. So in some cases, now you might be thinking, why would we want to do that? You want to be able to report um, on opportunity team members who's working on that opportunity. Although the account team member record gives you access to the opportunity by enabling it, it doesn't create an opportunity team member record automatically. So you want to have that record as traceability to then know, right, Andrew worked on this opportunity, he worked with Joe Blow, and they were on the following roles. So with this flow, this is now a screen flow. And we're launching this screen flow from custom action on the opportunity page. Now, with screen flows, because you're launching them from an action or something else, you don't necessarily know, the screen flow doesn't know the ID of the record that launched it in the case of using custom action. So there is a bit of a workaround for this. You create a variable in the resources of type text, and it must be exactly the following. So it must be record ID spelt the exact same way I have it here, and you set it as input. So you set it as an input variable, available for input, 
text and it must be record ID. This will automatically capture the record ID of the record that you have the action on. So I'm going to quickly jump across to this opportunity. It has that copy account team action. If I was to click that right now, what will happen in the back end is it's copying the ID of this opportunity into that variable and storing it during the process of the flow. Going back to my flow now and having a look. Hopefully everyone can see this clearly. We have a screen flow, all right? There's nothing else happening on the action, the start action. Then we have a get record. So we have the ID of the opportunity, but we need other parts of the opportunity for later on. So we're going get to get those records. And we only store one because there will only ever be one that matches back to it. The next one is we want to get the accounts. So we want to get the account related to that opportunity. So the account object, we'll set the field as the ID, equals the opportunity from account ID, right? we we'll get that. And again, there would only be one, so you only want the first record. You don't want it to set up a collection variable. And finally, we want to get all the account teams. And this is why we got the account ID. And we got the account records. All right, we get the account from there. And we can use that. You could do it a lot easier. I just did this for the purpose of demonstration. You could just use the account ID in the opportunity in your first get records and remove that second get records. And finally, this one, we want it to be all records because you can have multiple account team members assigned to an account. Now, this is where the fun begins. So we're going to have to loop through this because we have multiple records in our collection set. So to create our loop, we've used that account team members that was returned. I'm going to go from first item to last item. We talked about last week about what, if it's important to order records. It all depends on if they're required to be ordered in the collection variable and the way they're inserted if they're required to be ordered in a way on insertion. So at the moment, I'm not fussed which uh, account team member gets inserted as long as they all get copied across. We then have a get records for opportunity team. The reason we are doing this is because we want to be able to identify which account team members already exist on the opportunity team. So therefore, we don't want to be throwing errors because Salesforce only allows you to have one opportunity team per user. So if my user is already on that opportunity team, I can't create another record for my user. So we match the user ID equal to the current item of the loop, user ID. And again, we only want the first record because there's only ever going to be one record matching back. We then have within our loop, our decision. Now, this is something that caught me out uh, in the loop when I was doing my testing. When you arrange your elements in your loop, the way the loop triggers isn't this way. When you're using the auto layout, it goes downwards and back around. So when I was testing all of this funny story, I had the decision up here, the opportunity down here, which didn't make sense and caused an error. So luckily, I tested it before I got on with you guys. We now have a decision, and this decision is checking the results of our get opportunity team. From this, did we get anything back? So as you can see, the variables we've used, opportunity team, from the previous one, dot .id, and we use global constant false. So is it null? No, it's not. So therefore, open op team exists, yes. Otherwise, the default outcome is no. For the default outcome, we then want to create opportunity team members. This one's very simple and easy. How many records do we create? We can create one. We can use separate resources and literal values. So we're going to set the opportunity access. Now this one I've mapped from the op team opportunity access, right? So in this one in particular, current item from the loop, and that's going to be the record we're going to use. Opportunity ID is the opportunity from opportunity ID. Right? In this one in particular, it's just going to be the opportunity that triggered this. Team member role, going to grab 
the one from the account teams again. So these two are grabbing from the account team member record that we're using, which is the current item in the loop. And finally, user ID, again, is the user ID from that account team member. And this has successfully taken your opportunity, your account teams and created them on the op team. So if we have a look at it in action, we can see here the opportunity team, there is none. And I click this copy account team. And because this is a screen flow, it's gonna show me at the end, your flow finished, right? I haven't added any screens to it, which means it wouldn't overwrite this. So by default, we'll show this. By default, Salesforce doesn't refresh the page. So you have to refresh the page or I was reading online, you can create another action um, that's invoked by Apex that will refresh the page itself. And there you go, we've copied the op teams. We've got it all from our account. So the account we were using before in our example, if we look here, the account teams are those two records there. That's a dummy one, obviously. And you've got Andrew Fragis, executive sponsor. And here it's Andrew Fragis, executive sponsor, and the other one, account manager. So that's our first two flows for today. We've got one more flow to go through, and it's a fairly lengthy one. So before we get there, do any of you guys have any questions about account management, um, incorporating that with uh, flows, screen flows, or metadata so far. Yes, we've got a question here. So can you explain how we are checking team member exists or not? Is it based on user ID? So yeah, in the flow, the way we're checking it is, if we take a step back, we've, we've gained our account team members here. The first bit is the loop is the collection variable of all our account team members. We're using a get records on the user ID of the opportunity team member object. So we're checking, we wanna get any opportunity team member record where the user ID is equal to, and we're gonna use that account team member user ID of the first record in this loop. That's how we identify it. And then we have a decision if the previous one, which is the collection variable for the opportunity team members, is not empty, then we know that it already exists. It already exists for that user. So hopefully that answers your question there. Um, we've got someone else saying, great examples, we'll surely try it out. Yeah, hopefully you guys try this out. Um, towards, for the next session, I'll try and package this all together and get all the flows for you guys. So I'm gonna give a couple more minutes for questions before we move on to what is probably my most exciting flow that I have so far? Um, while I'm doing this, I'm gonna clean up some data just to show multiple flows triggering together. So I'm gonna first empty this field out and then I'll empty this field out. Click save. We're gonna use this account. Now this use case is quite a complex one. Again, we're using a screen flow. This use case is, we have customers and we have our users. Our users want to be able to clone account records and be able to choose what type of selected records, related records that is, that are cloned with it. So I've made some options here, but you guys can use your imaginations and add any other options to it as you wish. So, I don't see any more questions in here, which is great, or I think I saw one more, yep. In the current release, can we have more than one column in a screen flow window? You can, and I'm about to show you that in this flow as well, because my sandbox got upgraded to spring 21. So we're about to see that in action. So going on, we've got a screen flow. Again, this screen flow is gonna be triggered by a custom action on the account. Our first screen is going to be our clone screen. Now we are going to ask our user, once they've clicked the button, what objects would you like to clone? I've done this by adding a display text. So I've scrolled down here, added a display text section, and then added individual check boxes. These check boxes represent each type 
of related object we want to clone. So does the user want to clone only the open cases, the closed cases, open opportunities, closed opportunities, the tasks, or the account team? You can choose one or many of those in the one go. It's very simple to configure these. All you have to do is put a label in for the checkboxes. And for the display text, you just put the API name, so objects to clone, and then you put the text you want to display in here. And you've got some formatting around that. Now, with regards to the overall page, I've removed the previ previous button from the navigation and the pause button from the navigation because we don't need those um, in this. The next step now is we've got, again, we use that trick where we've got the record ID variable, wherever that is on here. There we go. The record ID variable. That one is to capture the account ID that triggered this action. And we're going to use that to grab all the account details and store that because that is very important when we're cloning because how would we copy cross account details if we don't store them? The next step, once we've gotten all that, is we're going to give the users an opportunity to modify some of the account details. Not all of them. You can choose some of them that they can modify with it. And to the question that was before, is more than one column, I've used that here. So the section here is a section, right? And I've split it up. I've got account name, the customer type industry, and then on the right, I've got a lookup and an address aspect. With the account name, we've set the default value to be a value from the get records. So this will automatically be populated and you will be able to then have it display and it's in the text box so it'll be editable. Now I can see we've got a question here, where do you select more than one column option? So here, I'll just click add column in. You can uh, change the width of it, say one to 12, makes the left one very uh, small. Otherwise we'll make half, half. We add another column in and you can keep adding columns in. All right, I don't wanna have four columns, so I'll have evenly split columns right there. Now with this, we've got our defaulted values and that's pulling in record values from our get records, right? Same thing with this text box here and same thing with this text box here. This one in particular, we're using a lookup. So this lookup is our owner, our account owner. And this will give the users the ability to change the owner of the account during the cloning process. So say for example, previous owner, was Sectiville, and I have access to edit this record. So I'll click clone, and he's got a pretty similar account to my one. So I'll change the name a little bit, and I'll change the owner to be me. And finally, we've got the address box. So this will have all the details there. So before I move on to the address, sorry, I forgot to mention with the lookup, you put the API name, so that's the owner. You put the field API name. Now, this field API name refers to the API name of the field on the object, which you reference here, that you want as the lookup. And I've defaulted the value to account dot owner ID. So it's already preset. We're not going to make it hard for our users where they have to re put everything in. The address aspect. You fill in preset values again, the account billing city, billing country. You can set the label of this aspect, postal code, state, and street. I don't need the other one, state, province uh, options. I'm not going to use those today. Again, I've removed the previous screen um, and the other screen. You can add them in if you wanted, the previous button. You don't necessarily need to have them. Okay, so we've got our two screens. So far, the user has selected what type of related records they want to um, clone. The next step, they've selected where, uh, if they wanted to update the records. If they didn't, they just click finish and it goes through. Now we go to our first important step. Now, this is going to be quite a long flow. So guys, please stay tuned um, and ask any questions in between. The first one is we're going to create account records. With this, I've manually mapped fields because I want to use the values from the 
component from the screen flow. So if I wanted to use this, for example, new billing address dot city, that is straight from my screen flow field. Same with these ones here. So all the billing details, the account name, I can choose to have that from my screen flow if I wanted to. Owner, this is from our screen flow from before. This one's from our screen flow. And customer type is from our screen flow as well. So if you have a look at when I go to enter that, I go down to my section here. I've got a lot of variables as you can see and we'll see them later on. And you've got from underneath the section screen components, it's got customer type. And we had that in there. It's very simple when we go to create our account. Now you can map more fields to it automatically if you wanted to as well. So we've created our account record, which is great. The next step, we need to create those related records, but we need to make sure we only create the related ones that they wanted to see. So firstly, we have a decision and this decision will tell us everything. From here, we want to see if open cases is true. And this is referring to the screen component. I'm not going to show you the decision for every single step, but this is going to be the same. In the screen flow, it's referring to the checkbox, open cases. If that's set to true, go down the yes path. If not, go down the no path and continue on. So if we go to the yes path, we've got open cases. Using the case object, uh, we're going to get these records. So first of all, the condition is is closed equals false. And account ID equals, and it's the account from our previous create account, uh, sorry, get account at the beginning. We want all records because we want all of those to be cloned. We're then going to create a loop. This will loop through all those open cases. So where are we choosing our loop from? It's from the collection variable that we previously created on get open cases. And we're going to go first item to last item. Again, not really fast in terms of which one's created first. This next part is extremely important. In our get records, we got the cases that already existed against the original account. Now, if we would automatically map all the details in the create case, it would just duplicate those cases against the original account rather than creating them on the cloned account. So you then need to create an assignment. The assignment overwrites values in a variable, in a record collection, wherever. So what we've done here, the current item from the loop create open cases, we set the case ID to null or an empty string. The current item from the loop create open cases account ID, we're going to set that to the account ID from the account we previously created. So the cloned account in this instance. We're making sure that we're creating new records against the new account. Then we go ahead and create a, a case. We create our new case, we added the element, and what I've done here is previously you've seen me in all our demonstrations use separate resources and literal values. This time I've gone and used that collection set and gone ahead and just used that and automatically mapped all the fields because I cleared those values previously. Therefore, it's able to be done. And it will loop through and keep creating those open cases. So we've done that now. We've, if you did no and they didn't have open cases selected, you would pass on to here. After the last one in the open cases, it would pass on to the next step as well. So far, guys, I'm going to pause for, for a minute. Is there any questions in what we've done so far before I keep going to the next steps of this? So this is something that can be modified in multiple ways, right? You can take it in a way that you have different uh, selections, different filtering on those selections. And it gives a bit more control to the users of what is being cloned. Most cases you have users that only want to clone a record and some specific filtered criteria of related objects. 
Now, this is the basic version of this. You can then go to a more advanced version where you're generating those records that were created or those, sorry, generating those records on the flow screen from the related list and the users will be able to select each record. That's a more advanced option. So now we're gonna repeat this process with the closed cases. So again, we set our condition, our decision, closed cases equals true. So that means someone's ticked the box. Then we're gonna get the closed cases. Very important to keep that criteria is closed equals true. Um, whatever the criteria may be, account ID equals the original account that triggered this action. We then use our loop and our assignment variable. So very important here as well that we don't skip this step. Set the case ID, empty string. Uh, we create from here, we set the account ID as the account ID from the created account. And then finally, we automatically map it and loop through until we finish creating those closed cases. Next decision is our open opportunities. Now, you could go ahead and make this even more complex. I haven't today, but this is something that if you wanted to spend more time on, could make this even more complex. You'd get the opportunity records, loop through that, and then put a loop within the loop that would get related records and loop through those related records. And then you start again, so you get opportunity two. Let's say for example, you had opportunity products. So I would add a loop here and loop through the get records. Then I would have the get records here of opportunity product, loop through that, creating those opportunity products against that opportunity we just created. And then it would exit the loop and start again. A little bit of loopception here, uh, but if you wanted to get really complex and carry over the related objects, related object, you can do that nest loops within each other. Now, going on, we've got our closed opportunities. So then again, it's very hard. Make sure this is where it's important to name things correctly. Um, because as you can see on the left, all these variables are created and resources are created. As I'm going through this, I don't want to get confused. So another good practice is make sure your names, the API names are things relevant to you. So this one, I've, yes, but it's the yes closed ops is the API name. For the resources is our closed opportunities equals true. So that's the... Again, the screen flow checkbox, if it's true. From here, we're gonna get our closed records. So closed opportunity is closed equals true. You could do closed one, closed lost, it's up to you. If you wanted to differentiate more, you can add some more conditioning. Uh, we talked about in the first week and the second week, how the different types of conditioning. So you've got or, you can also do custom logic as well. So that's a corporation of and and ors. Uh, that's a bit of a tongue twister there, guys, but. Um, yeah, then you've got account ID equals account from the account ID. All right, so that's the account that just triggered this. And finally, you've got your loop, your update, assignment, closed opportunity, create a records. The next one I did was my tasks. And this is essentially the user that triggers this screen flow tasks that they own assigned to that account. So my task equals true. Then we go down. And what this is going to do is going to get any task where the owner ID equals the user ID. So this is the user that triggered it. And this one in particular, I'm using a global variable here. So this one here, I go down all the way down. Where's the user ID? Yeah, so from global variable, I will just use the user.id. And this is stored in flows as the user. These are all the details of the user that triggered the flow. The what ID, if you're familiar with tasks, uh, you'll know the API name for related to is what ID. So that is things such as accounts, so physical things. The who ID is a person. 
contacts, leads, and equals to the record ID. So we set this. The record ID is what's triggered this, which is the account ID. And that is that variable we stored at the beginning, that very important one we stored at the beginning because it's launched from an action. We then store all the records. And again, go through this. So we loop, assignment variable. I need to stress how many times this is very important to have this assignment a variable. Um, from my experience in the answer community and answering questions, the amount of times in the answer community where people are stuck because they go to automatically map either a collection variable or just a record and using this automatically map it to a create records and the flow gives the error of um, incorrect ID because what it does is it tries to insert the ID. That's one of the fields that it automatically maps and tries to insert that ID. Then you've got your task. And then finally, we've got our account teams. Same process again, without getting too repetitive and sounding like a broken record, our account teams will go through and loop through here. And that brings us to the end of this big flow here. So if I quickly zoom out of it, it's a nice long flow that we've built here. So before I show this in action with other flows um, as well, is there any question thus far on any of the items we used, why we use them, uh, what we're doing? Does everyone understand the use case behind it as well? Maybe you have a different use case and you're hoping to understand if this could work for it. Please feel free to chuck it in the chat. Um, the general chat's fine, just chuck it in and I'm happy to answer it for you guys as we're going along. Um, this is, while you're coming up with some questions, this, this is quite, I would say, powerful to have as an option. If you spend more time on this, building out the different options available in those screen flows, uh, it could be quite powerful in terms of speeding up your users' time they use to create records. So the example I'm going to use is United Oil and Gas Singapore. I'm going to clone that because I want to make a subsidiary, which is United Oil and Gas Australia. When I do that, it's going to be a lot easier if I just go clone. They've got the same industry values. They've got the same uh, customer type and all sorts, right? They might have the same website. They might have the same phone numbers. You can add any field to your screen flow to help build this out. So let's see this in action. And I think everyone's waiting to see this in action. A uh, brief summary of the use case of this flow. Yep, so the use case of this flow is giving the ability to select specific related objects to be cloned along with your account. So rather than just cloning account and all related objects, you've got that specific related objects. Now, I took some basic examples of what those specific related objects were, but you could go into some further arm filtering based on, let's say, for example, I had a specific opportunity of record type renewal, right? And I wanted to clone this and I wanted to clone the record type of renewal. You would have a checkbox that says uh, renewal opportunities as well. So looking at this and hopefully that answered your question. Looking at this now, we're going to click that custom action I created that references the flow. Um, in a minute, I'll show you what the custom action looks like from a setup point of view. It's very simple. We're going to click clone account. This is going to load up our first screen that if you remember from before. So we go back to flow builder right at the top here. It's a lot of scrolling. Our first screen here, it's got all those checkboxes. We can validate, yep, it's got all our checkboxes. For the purpose of this, I'm going to use all the options. Now, I could have used some of the options. I'm going to use all the options. And I want to clone all of them. So you're asking the user, what objects would you like to clone? Um, I've got a question here. Will Salesforce still retain workflow in the future as they extensively enhancing flow features in each releases? Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure if they will. Uh, I know there is a lot of thought leadership around this, uh, a lot of people in the community talking about this. Uh, the first week we talked about what's better, 
workflow, flow, process builder. Uh, in my opinion, I think my personal opinion, and don't take this as uh, as the commandments or anything, but I think that they're phasing away from workflow rule because flow can do everything a workflow rule can do, right? It's just a different layout in terms of how it achieves it. A flow can do everything a process builder, almost a process builder can do and more, all right? So hopefully that answers your question, gives you a bit of insight. Um, one of the things from the first week, if you missed it, that I mentioned um, is that it will be quite beneficial um, when you're evaluating things to stick to looking at process builder and flow rather than um, workflow rules. So next, we, from our clone account, we go to that second screen. Now in between this, if we're following our flow, we've got our first screen, we've done a get records in between, and now we've got our update account details for the clone. In this one, we're going to update this because our current record is Singapore. I want it to be set as Australia. Now, we'll set the state province to New South Wales, the city to Sydney, and we're going to set the country. If you remember from our first flow we showed, what's this going to do? If anyone chuck in the chat very quickly, what's this going to do? Because I've updated it to Australia. Who remembers? If you guys are all paying attention to the first flow, because I set the country to Australia, although we've got the screen flow going, what's this going to do? There we go, region update. Perfect. APAC. Exactly. So we're going to have multiple um, flows updating and going at the same time. So when I'm ready, and I am, and I can change this, you know, I can use this lookup field if I wanted to, to so search for people. Whoops. Got a bit of an error here. I'm going to change this and do this again. Quickly do this and we go to next. We change this to Australia. Change this to Sydney. W and this one to Australia. I click next. It's going to create that record. Now, again, we talked about this before. Salesforce by default wouldn't redirect you to that. However, there is some aspects where you could invoke an Apex action within your flow that will redirect you. Now, given majority of the people on this call, I would assume are developers, and I'm no developer. Um, you can invoke an action, Apex action, that will then redirect to the newly created record. But for the meantime, we're just going to quickly go to that account that we created. We'll see the all accounts list. We see a new one that's under Australia. And we'll see here, firstly, it's gone and copied that task. We had two opportunities on the previous one. It's created this with opportunities. It's created the three different cases. Uh, if I hover over this, you can see that that's a new case. That's a closed case, right? And if you look here, that's a closed opportunity. That's an open opportunity. And finally, it's gone and copied our account team member. The details of this, we copied some of the details we had across. And our lucky last one that you all got right, our region field got populated as well. Because that got populated from our other flow. So we had two flows on at the same time. Is there any questions at all in terms of these flows that I've shown you today? We now have roughly 10 minutes left. Um, done quite a lot of talking, so I hopefully want to hear some some thoughts, um, some questions you guys have around flows, account management. If you guys have any uh, use cases for account management flows that, or you're unsure of that you want to handle in a flow, chuck them in the chat. I'm happy to talk about them now, go through them, because this time is, is for you guys now, right? Uh, a couple of things to note. It gets very confusing, like I said, uh, when you start to build the longer flows. So be very, key point, be very careful of how you name things. The next key point is if you're wanting to automatically assign values in a create record, make sure you use an assignment element 
to clear the ID of the saved record. Right? That's the minimum. Clear the ID of the saved record. You set that to the global constant empty string, and you can do that. We have some questions coming in. Is coding more manageable than creating two complex flows? Um, if you want my very biased opinion, no, because my biased opinion is I'm I'm not a developer. I don't have, I've never had the personal patience to be a developer. I'm an admin uh, for a flow, and having these capabilities in flow, this is quite amazing to someone like myself as an admin. You know, previously I would have to go uh, request a developer to build this. Uh, it would get added to the long list of things that the developer is working on. And it would have to go through rigorous testing, regression testing, the works. Right? I'm not saying don't you don't need to test flows. You do need to test flows. You do need a regression test. But it's a lot easier to manage a flow from my perspective. Um, is the flow governed by governor limits? Yes, governor limits apply. So this is where you got to be careful when you build your flows. Right? You don't want to hit governor limits. You don't want to hit any other limits as well. So if you you have your flow too loose, it will start triggering limits. Uh, if I pull in all records, and it will go in and go haywire with those records, right? It'll hit those limits. You start getting those governor limit warnings as well. Any other questions you guys want to add? Um, while you're thinking of some, this will I'll try and package all these flows together that we've done over the last three weeks and. If I can get it all together, I'll put them on next week's presentation. So guys come along for next week's one, we'll add them in there. It's important to note that when you're building these flows, plan it first. Um, I found it very easily, I said this last week as well, found it very easy to build these flows once I'd thought it through, written it down on some pen and paper. I had notes written down uh, what I wanted to do, Firstly, what was my use case? Where did I want to get to? And then second of all, right, what do I have available to me? I'll start writing some things down. And also, even when I'm building my flows, I would sit here and I'll spend the first five minutes not even adding things onto my uh, canvas. I would just be looking at the options and in my mind, I'll be thinking through what I wanted to do with them. Hopefully, you guys... Um, got a lot from this so far. Is there a limit of the number of flow creation? Uh, there is a limit of number of active flows you're allowed to have in flow creation. And um, that is based on the org edition you have. So, for example, an MPSP, different limit to, say, enterprise. Right? you got to have a look. There is a help um, document online that shows all the limits for that depending on the different orgs um, that you have. So yes, there is a limit of how many active ones you have. There's also a limit for how many flows you have in general. So be very cautious of those limits. If you have one of the smaller limits, be wise on what you use the flows for. How do you plan for when to use a fault line? Um, a fault line is essentially when you know there is a chance of some an error occurring. So if it's trying to find something and it doesn't exist, right, it's, it's going to store an empty value and then you go to use it further on in the next one, the empty value will error. So you put a fault line in where you, where you know it's going to use the next value. That's how you plan around when you're going to use it. Can we use custom labels also in flow? I'm not sure what you mean by custom labels. If you mean by custom labels, um, labeling these different elements, then yeah, you can. I've, I've created um, like metadata. Yeah, yeah, you can use metadata in flow. So if you looked at the first one here, I've used my metadata in here. And I've got my fault path. So in this one, it's getting my metadata records. Hopefully, I answered your question correctly and I haven't confused myself along the way. Um, but yes, you can. With fault paths, the one thing I'll say, uh, 
one thing I'll say about fault paths is don't overthink them. So don't think you need to add one for every single aspect of it. Just cater for what you know is going to error. Similarly, if we have custom label with a value, can we call them? Um, I think I'll have to double check that one. I'm not sure. About that. What is the order of execution of flow? Can we predict the same? So the order of execution of the flow itself, uh, that would be essentially what you indicate here. It will execute everything in order they have your elements in. Uh, obviously, this is the auto layout feature, so it's got it all nicely. So it will go from the trigger to the first element to the second element to the third, fourth, et cetera, work downwards. In terms of other elements of your Salesforce, so if you have some Apex triggers and everything else going on, what is the order of execution for that? Um, it would depend. There is there is a complex, there is not a complex, a very nice diagram that shows the order of execution for those and what comes first. Uh, with regards to multiple flows and which one takes precedence over the other, as you saw before, the screen flow was triggered first. So that's gonna occur first. The record will get inserted. And because we have our region one set on after save, so after the record is saved, that's the order of execution. It will happen after because we created the account by cloning. After that account is created, it will then add that region in. So technically in the flow we made, because we create the account over here, it will change the region of it before it's gone ahead and created all the related objects. So this will continue firing while it's added the region because that was after the account was created. So hopefully that answers your question as well. Any final thoughts and questions, guys? Um, while you're coming up with those, I hope you guys got a lot out of this session um, and you guys enjoyed the flows we went through. Hopefully you guys enjoyed as much as I did that very last yeah, flow. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there is no doubt. Yeah, it's a very informative. And uh, yeah, you, you tried to answer almost all the things. Uh, even yep. that last flow is a very interesting one. Uh, as a yep. developer, yeah, we know like we can implement whatever we want. But after we see this demo, yes, we can do everything from the clicks itself. Yeah, we need to, everyone, we need to try for the flow. Yeah, exactly. I, I personally, like, I, I have the capabilities of becoming a coder. I've never sat down and, and learned it, but but um, in in my eyes, if I, you know, had learned Apex properly and everything else around it, I would still choose clicking over um, coding. That's just a personal preference, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, really, really true. Okay, so I think we almost near the time. Yeah. Don't forget, guys, sign up for next week's session. So we have one more session in Flow February. Make sure you sign up. Next week's session is going to be a very educational session on the value of productivity, how to boost user adoption. All right, so next week is going to be a big session. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in that note, we can conclude. Like, thank you all once again for joining the session of the week three. It was, yeah, I think, very interactive and informative session. Hope everyone uh, take away something new or recap. If you already aware some few things, your mm -hmm. valuable feedback and suggestion are being always appreciated. Please fill the survey form and it's shortly available in your email box. Thank you, Andrew, uh, to sharing the Salesforce series to the Trailblazer community. See you next week's session with the same time for week four. That is a final session for the Salesforce Flow series. And also it's a decider who will be the lucky winner for uh, getting the four certification vouchers. So don't miss it. Uh, until then, thank you once again and stay safe. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Zach.